Welcome back once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today we're going to take a look at a very large, unique vehicle that was added for the purpose of heavy hauling. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into this review and check it out. Being too large to travel on roads in a normal fashion, the 60 ton Tonar 7501 and 7502 are massive hawking vehicles. The 7501 was a dump truck configuration and the 7502 was a semi-tractor. Outfitted with a Cummins diesel engine and an Allison transmission, the Tonar is said to have a load capacity of 128 tons. This vehicle was designed for the sole purpose of operations in the largest diamond mines in Russia. In SnowRunner, this vehicle is the Boar 45318. The Boar is different than normal heavy class trucks, as we will learn. It's a very large, heavy truck which has been upgraded recently, yet there are some concerning downsides that players need to know about. However, it does perform well outside of those red flags that we will talk about here in just a few moments. But before I give any more away, the base stats will be on your screen for your viewing and we're moving right into downside number one, front overhang. Upon inspection of the bore, despite its decent clearances and large tires, its front overhang is a real problem. It's pretty safe to say that you're going to take engine damage from how big of a nose this thing has. Combine that with our number two downside coming up, and this can cause real issues for drivers. Downside number two, it's bouncy and stability. Anyone who has played the board knows that it tends to gallop in mud and its suspension is very bouncy. At fast paces, this can spell for disaster with its overhang collisions being very violent and its stability not being the best either. I don't think it's the worst when it comes to balance, but when you drive it, I believe you'll understand. Downside number three, wheel spin. Later, we'll talk about the upgrades to the bore regarding its grip, but due to its massive power and its gearbox setup, its wheel spin can get out of control if not monitored correctly. Later, I'll dive a little bit more into gearboxes and speed, but just be mindful of this downside. Downside number four, average tank size and bad fuel economy. If you compare all the other heavy haulers to the bore, you'll notice its tank size is average and its fuel consumption rivals trucks like the International Paystar 5600 TS. I have speculation that the culprit is the gearbox. The rest of the vehicles in this class that share the number one engine all have the advanced special gearbox, except the bore. I believe the advanced special is more restrictive when it comes to RPMs, while the other normal gearboxes are not. That really is the only difference between the bore and the rest of those heavy vehicles. To use the bore, however, as a heavy hauler, you're going to need support because it can burn through a good amount of fuel in a little bit of time. Downside number five, utility. Not such a big surprise here, but it's worth mentioning that the bore isn't the most versatile, yet it can use some of those different add-ons that some of those other heavies cannot. Overall though, it's a very focused vehicle that only has a few opportunities to do certain jobs. Downside number six, power bleed off. Previously, I mentioned that it had the strongest engine in the game, but for some reason it feels as if its power is bleeding off and not driving to all the axles. This is evident with the high range gearbox, in high gear, and even in low gear, low plus, with the differential locking engaged. My speculation is that the engine is not optimized correctly for the bore's faster set gearboxes. Another thing I noticed when I was testing is that the bore takes a long time to spool up its power in high gear with the high range gearbox. I felt very puzzled by this because the number two American engine works fine with high range in trucks like both of the twin steers. And lastly, sometimes the high range gearbox in high gear will not actually stall the vehicle, yet the wheels will continue to turn slowly, almost like there isn't any power being transferred. This is a very odd downside because even in low gear, 
There really shouldn't be much that slows this thing down, yet it does feel like it struggles. And finally, coming in at downside number 7, it's expensive. To quickly wrap up our downsides list with number 7, the Boar is not cheap. In comparison to a lot of other vehicles in its class, it would be hard to justify purchasing it after experience with our number 6 downside. For this reason, I felt this one should be listed, but now we gotta move on to the good news because that was rough. So here are the pros for the Boar 45318. Breaking into the upsides list at upside number one, power, all-wheel drive, and differential locking. Our normal upside number one could not elude its placement and for good reason. The number one engine in game, coupled with those switchable features, allows the board to call on the best power the game has to offer. But just be aware of those power bleed offs we talked about in downside number six. Upside number two, upgraded tires and weight. Originally, when this vehicle was first released, it had some of the larger tires in the game, but I was puzzled that a Russian truck only had the UOD option. However, around season 6, the developers gave it the heavyweights off-road tire, and I couldn't be happier. I have seen increased performance under heavy loads despite some of those downsides we previously listed. And overall, I think this was a step in the right direction to give this vehicle more popularity. Lastly, it is rather heavy, so coupled with those upgraded tires, the boar's effectiveness will see increases, definitely. Upside number three, it seems fast. We mentioned previously that it had large tires, and also that its gearbox loadouts accessible to the boar have higher wheel spin revolution speeds. I believe this is why the bore feels faster, even in low plus with the differential locking engaged. I actually had to cross check this information with other sources and indeed with larger tires and faster gearboxes, you will have greater distances covered in those revolutions. Overall, I think moving at faster speeds in lower gears is a very pleasing thing, especially when the requirement for differential locking is low gear for those switchable features. And finally, coming in at upside number 4, trailer clearances. Out of all the big heavy haulers, the only one that sits as high as the bore is the P16. When lining up some other notable high saddle haulers, it's clear that the Boar is a good choice for high saddle hauling or special mission trailers. Having that extra clearance is a good quality of life improvement, especially when those roots are trying to grab your trailers at every turn. Alright, so moving on to my personal ratings for this vehicle. For power, it boasts the number one engine in the game, so we knew this one was going to be a 5. For terrain navigation, a rating of 3. The combination of those downsides hurt this score, but overall I think the boar can be used pretty well. In truth, the overall skill curve to effectively use this truck merits it a lower score. For aesthetics, I do not dislike it, but it's not going to be on my favorites list anytime soon. Stability is exacerbated from its violent nose collisions, but this rating can be increased when driving slow with caution. An average sized fuel tank and rivaling the fuel economy of the International Paystar 5600 TS doesn't really give it too long until it's out of gas. The board doesn't have many supporting add-ons, but we have to understand that it's really just a dedicated hauler. The only reason this is not a 5 is due to the power bleed off and wheel spin, but overall it's still a good rating. So in conclusion, the Boar 45318 on paper seems like it could be this wild, crazy razorback of a truck, yet its power slips, bouncy nature, and overall fuel efficiency doesn't make it too appealing to drivers compared to some of those elite heavy trucks. It's also super expensive, which doesn't help its popularity either. When diving into the game files, the rear axles and the front axles have different torque coatings, which I believe could be part of the issue. For having the largest engine in the game, a change in gearboxes in theory 
shouldn't affect performance like this. For example, trucks that have the number two engine, like both of the twin steers, have different gearboxes than the rest of the vehicles in their class, and they do quite well. Overall, the Boar is still a very unique experience that I do recommend trying. Its high saddle height is very appealing, and I've had success in other endeavors as well, on and off stream. I think it's a good alternative to the normal Zix or Colob setup if you're looking for something different. So in closing, the Boar 45318 has seen some improvements, which I am grateful for. But I think if the power bleed off issue gets fixed, this might be a wild drive. For now, it just feels like the power comes late and feels very sporadic. However, it can pull heavy weight, has good maneuverability, and it's just something different which is always a good time. I think it will serve you well if you can mitigate those red flags. Try this one out and let me know what you think. I really hope this review gave you a fresh, new perspective of the Boar 45318. Please smash that like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is currently struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day, God bless, and stay upright.